you feel if the goblins of Halloween occupied your house all year long? Even the most ardent prayers couldn't rid one house of ghoulies and ghosties, at least as they were reported to most of America in a recent shocking book and motion picture. Unexplainable and terrifying became commonplace in the House of Horror. On the night of November 13, 1974, Ronald DeFeo brutally murdered six members of his family in their lovely house in Amityville, Long Island. In late 1975, George and Kathy Lutz and their three children moved in. A month later, they moved out. They claimed they'd experienced a horrifying period of demonic possession. The house stood empty for a long time. After all, why would anybody want to call such a ghost-plagued house home? Jim Cromarty and his family bought and moved into the house. Let him tell you why. I've had uncles and aunts of mine who have played in this house as children. Uh, I played in this house myself as a child. And there's no doubt about the tragedy that took place. To be very honest, the reason we bought the house at the time was it was a, it was a, it was a good buy. And because we loved the house, it was, it is a beautiful house, and uh, we really felt that once we moved in, we changed the number, uh, we repainted it, and we made it a beautiful part of the community again. We really thought everything would just go away. We we never dreamt what would take place here. The fame of the Amityville house brought the gawkers, the tourists, and the traffic jammers. It was such an, a pleasant scene inside here. And outside, it was so insane. It was right after the book had come out. People all fighting to have their picture taken in front of the house. And here we were trying to have a lovely, quiet Sunday afternoon together. And, and, and this insanity was out there. When they came, they, they literally on Christmas Eve, attacked the house, and uh, three cars. One car drove all over the front lawn. Another one watched for the police, and the other group, all, all men, about 20 to 25, I guess, they, the other groups just stood out on the front porch and urinated all over it on Christmas Eve. The normally law-abiding community faced new police problems. Amityville Police Sergeant Pat Camarado. One occasion, right after the Luxes moved out, a man came to the house in a van with six goats and he wanted the goats to eat the grass to chase the evil spirits away so we have a lot of cuckoos. Uh, one of the uh, police officers saw two young couples uh, outside of the, the building. One of the girls was in hysterics more or less uh, and uh, the policeman figured maybe he could help her and he asked her what the trouble was. She told him she had vibrations and she was all upset because of the house. And, uh, he told her, hey, you should not buy the house, you buy the yacht club, and she turned it off just like that. As a result of the story of Lutz's 28-day stay, this small piece of Long Island real estate gained an international reputation. The Amityville Horror told the Lutz's story and in a way created a legend. There are some people, particularly the Cromartys, who are highly skeptical of the incident. For example, it's written... Quote, January 13th. Amityville was hit by another storm of hurricane strength. Sleet was pelting all upon Island. It's a very simple thing to write to the National Weather Bureau down in Washington and, and ask for the weather on the dates when that coincide with the book. And they will see for themselves that none of the weather coincides. Not one day, not one snowflake, not one raindrop. Quote, December 29th, Father Mancuso could no longer ignore the red splotches in the palms of his hands, nor the excruciating pain he felt when he touched the sore spots. As far as the priest goes, he testified in federal court in Brooklyn in October, I think it was, <clears throat> that um, he had only come to this house once to bless it. As far as the rest of the book goes, none of it was true. He did not uh, have any of the afflictions on his hands and the, the sores and the stench and uh, 
anything that was mentioned either in the book or in the movie. None of that was true, and this is um, under oath in federal court. The transcript of the trial does not reflect the denial by the priest. In fact, no specific mention is made of sores and afflictions that he suffered, either pro or con. Film audiences were led to believe that a window shattered. This is the window. You can see that it's exactly the same as it has been for the last 51 years. The house was built in 1928. There's all the old paint, the old putty. Nothing's been disturbed. Perfectly innocent windows. This is the original banister. In the book, uh, it was supposed to have been torn out of its hinges and completely demolished or something. Uh, as you can see, it is the original banister. It's been here, like everything else, 50 years, and it's still in perfect condition. Quote, January 2nd. Holding his nose, George forced open the paneling and shone his flashlight around the red painted walls. The stench of human excrement was heavy in the confined space. It formed a choking fog. My name is Patty Camarado. I was friends with Allison DeFeo, the girl who was murdered with the rest of her family here in 1974. This, I'm gonna show you, is the mysterious red room that's so noted for in the book. This door, which they say was never here, was here, is here, always will be here, I suppose. This is the red room. Nothing more than a storage area where Allison and her brothers and I used to keep toys. Just red, you know? There's never any feeling of spirit presence or ghosts or any sort of thing like that. It's just a play area. We used to keep toys. Nothing more than that. This is the door of our home. In the book, it became a 250-pound door, which was completely blown out of its frame and off its hinges. As you can see, it's the original door, solid as a rock, immovable, and quite innocent. We just hope that sooner or later we're going to knock a complete hole in this uh, charade that's been created. and hope that we can just get back to living a normal life again not have to worry about when we come home at night that there are 30 people in the yard that maybe we'll have to call the police again give them a break give the neighbors a break its reputation to this day has bedeviled the Cromartis who are clearly convinced there are no ghosts or demons or ghouls or rattling chains or bloody screams but would you live in this house